Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Augustus Hinton, and today I'll be teaching you how to create the rain effects that you see here on this drawing that I did in Photoshop. So I'm not teaching you how to draw or create this whole image, I'm just teaching you how to do the rain effects that you see. And I'll post a link to the Pinterest page that I used as reference and inspiration for this drawing. If I can figure out how to share this file via a link that does not expire, then I will do that and post it below. If you don't see it there, I failed and I, I don't know how. So tell me how in the comments because that'd be really helpful. And let's get started. So the composition I'm starting with today is a little bit different than standard. I'm doing a vertical format and I'm also working in 12 frames per second, kind of just to shake things up. Um, vertical formats are also super common for social media. So it could be a, a valuable thing to start learning how to work in. Um, and I just like the look of 12 frames per second, and I think it adds to the sort of quaintness of the image that we're working with. The only thing I've done so far is make these trees sway a little bit because we're going to have some rain coming from this way. Um, and this is very similar to my grass blowing and wind tutorial that I did previously. Feel free to look up that on my channel as well. Um, just using Duik and some Papa pins to make these guys sway in the wind. Okay, cool. Let's get started with adding some rain falling from the sky as and that's a good start for a rain tutorial. Let's do layer, new adjustment layer. And we are just going to search for rain. There we go, CC rainfall is what you want. It's just a simulation effect. Um, don't worry, we're gonna do more than <laughs> just the default of this right here. Um, this is a really great start. Like this effect puts you in a really great spot as default. But we're going to adjust some settings to customize this and not have it look like default because no matter what you're doing, you should never have an effect be default because anybody that uses After Effects is going to know that you did that. So let's not do that. Okay, we're going to add some wind and I'm going to crank it to the left to give this some diagonal. There we go. I am also going to decrease the size of this by quite a bit. Maybe that, I think that's the, both the length and the thickness. Um, yeah, decrease that, maybe a little bit more, um, drops, I think that feels like an okay amount, um, let's see, what else do we got, opacity, I might up that just a bit, let's do like 35, so you can see this a little bit more, and that looks okay, I feel fine with that, feel free to mess around with all these settings to get them to be exactly how you'd like, depending on what your scene is. Now that I have some rain falling from the sky, I want to have some more interaction with this scene because right now it's clearly just laid over and we don't want that. So what I would like to do is have some like rain splashing on the roof, maybe the top of this door, maybe the windows, and then also this edge right here, I think, would look really great to have um, rain splashing off of it. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit Command Y to make a new solid. It doesn't color, it doesn't matter what color. And let's zoom out here. Let's search for particle. All right, let's type in particle, and we want simulation CC particle systems two. Let's click that. It'll give us something that doesn't look anything like rain, but that's okay. Um, we are going to twirl down probably all of these, but we'll start with particle. For the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the color so it can help you visualize that this will indeed look like rain. So let's adjust the birth color, which is the color it is when it first, this, when it, okay, and particle refers to like one of these lines. Like that is a particle coming out of the emitter right here. And so the birth color is the color that the particle is right when it first comes out of here. And you can make that change over time. Um, and so this is looking ready or red and orange because it's changing from yellow to red um, over the course of its life cycle. So let's change the birth color to, uh, let's do like a white. Let's just go straight white. Maybe we'll do like a tad bit of blue in there. And then let's change the death color to dramatic, but let's change the death color to just a little bit darker of a blue, maybe like, uh, we'll try that. That's like a nice rainwater color. Cool. Great, that's like a super intense splash that nobody wants. So now let's, okay, what do we want? We wanna change the producer. I kept saying emitter, but 
this is it's referring to the producer, which is just where the stuff is coming out of. It's a little target guy. So we want to change the X radius. We want to stretch that bad boy out so that we can visualize it splashing off of a surface. Oh gosh. Because otherwise it's coming from one point and nothing is bouncing off of one point here. So we spread it out. Let's also have, let's see. Let's now decrease the birth rate because that is going to just have this chill, which is great. There we go. Um, so even that you can tell a little bit closer to looking like a surface that has some rain bouncing off of it. But of course you can tell that this is all going mostly down. We want it to go up. So let's now click on physics, twirl that guy down. And you could always just like rotate this probably, but let's just change the gravity from one to, gosh, let's do like, negative 1.4 okay that seems okay for now um and then now let's change i think it's the life cycle longevity because these are now these are lasting too long i'm just looking for a little splash that's going to go boop off of a surface not something that's looking like it's continuing to pour down or fly up so let's change the longevity let's crank it down and you can see as we do that they no longer last that long. Like they're just not flying up there for as long, which is great. Now let's adjust this at the X radius. We're gonna have it be a little bit smaller so that when we eventually pre-comp this, we don't have things flying off the edge and having a very clear line to the edge of this rain um, splatter. So let's adjust that, make it a little bit smaller. That's not too bad. And then Let's see, we're just gonna kind of adjust these because you know, do one, see how it looks, adjust another. And that's kind of all you can do to fit your scene. Ooh, okay, great. So now, so I just adjusted velocity. I promise I practiced this before, but I'm kind of rediscovering it as I go. I'm lowering the velocity so that it doesn't fly out in this spherical pattern. So if I lower it, it now looks like it's kind of just jumping up versus um you know doing this crazy spray out from the center so that looks good i'm also going to maybe turn down my gravity as i make it closer to zero um, because it seems a little like just flying off a little bit too much so and then i do that let's maybe lower that even more the velocity even more cool so what we're going to do for now is click on this guy do shift command c to pre-comp it be sure to remove all attributes into the new composition because we want the effect that's on this to be in that composition. And we can call this um, rain splatter. Look at that, fantastic. Now we've got this big, beautiful pre-comp. Let's just hit Y to move our anchor point, put it in the middle, and we're gonna rotate. And we're gonna just try centering one along this stretch of roof, which I know is quite small, but it's good to have this be sort of large and more versatile than just this strip of roof, unless you wanna get super customized. We're not going to for the purposes of this tutorial. Rotate them a bit more. I'm gonna scale them up a little, and I'm not gonna be super concerned with the edge of it very clearly flying off right here because we can adjust that with a mask. So right now, let's just try to match like the scale of what we want right here to um, like the scale of the way the rain looks in comparison to the roof. And this is maybe a little big, but I think it's kind of getting the idea across. Yeah, I think it looks not too bad. So now to get rid of these edges or these sort of overshoots right here, I'm just gonna hit G for the pen tool, zoom in, do a real quick little garbage mask here do something like that. Maybe move this in a little bit and then hit M for my mask properties, twirl that down, feather this a bit. So there's not a clear edge. There you go, wham, bam. And I think I might even decrease, I'm gonna go in here, click on the solid and turn down the longevity even a little bit more because it, I'm getting a little bit too much of that vertical motion that I don't want. 
So that really doesn't look too bad. If you're looking to make this look more opaque based on the way that we've done this, one option is to go into your rain splatter pre-comp, do a new adjustment layer, search for choker, and instead of choking it the normal way, which would of course shrink it down, if you reverse that property, you can make it a bit thicker. So I'm gonna do like just a little, and you can see that it, well, the more you do it, <laughs> the more you do it, the sort of thicker each of these little raindrops will become. And we can go back to our other composition, and it's just a bit more visible if you're having a hard time sort of with the scale of all of this. I think that looks pretty nice. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna duplicate this guy and just move him over to the other side of the roof. Um, and I'm gonna try to make this pre-comp work for as many situations as I can. It might be beneficial to make another one that is maybe longer and skinnier or shorter and fatter, depending on what you need, This what the rain is gonna be bouncing off of. I'm gonna go ahead and try to make it work with all of this. And even the direction is probably a bit off here, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much for right now. The only thing I'm gonna adjust in order to make this look a bit more realistic is the opacity of this one. I want this, this roof side to be less intense because the rain is coming from this direction. So it's gonna be hitting this roof more directly. So let's just scale this whole bad boy down and then adjust the um, mask on here to have it stretch out more accordingly. Not bad, and then maybe move them down just a little. So yeah, so we can then see that it's a bit more intense on this side where the rain's hitting more directly, not as much here. That looks great. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do some BB rain splatter. I'll do one on this door. I think that would look nice. So let's rotate him. There we go, move him. Just gonna try to look. I think that looks okay. Minus, of course, the mask, which we will now adjust. Clicking here, whoops, dragging over. Click, click, drag. I'm gonna get rid of this guy entirely. He doesn't need to be there. Nice, we've got that interacting with the house a little bit. That looks pretty cute, especially from a distance. And now, to sort of bring this together a bit more, I'm going to duplicate the first one that I made Shift him down, we're going to rotate him, oh my gosh, no we're not, rotate him, let's actually just do a zero on the rotation to make it flat, get rid of the mask, perfect, and we're going to make sure that this stretches across the length of this little island, so let's hit S for scale, crank him up right around there, and Let's see, I think we're gonna, let's do this. Let's center him kind of vertically. So put him sort of in the center there. Promise this is gonna be a thing. And then we are going to warp this dude. So let's do distort, I'm gonna search for warp and do distort mesh warp, perfect. And so this effect will, if you grab one, you can see that it's going to sort of warp the layer accordingly, which is just, that's pretty simplified, but we are going to, let's see, we're gonna reduce the columns because we don't really need a lot of columns on here because we're just gonna be adjusting sort of the height where this is sitting ver uh, vertically, this rain. We do need some more rows. That's not bad. I'm gonna try to get this one to line up here. And then, I discovered that we do in fact need columns. Look at us learn together. Because we need to adjust these individually, don't we? Okay, we learned something together here. <laughs> because we're gonna need, like this section is gonna look different than this section is gonna look different than this section. So now that we have this, I feel okay with this amount. Feel free to add more or less as you need, but probably only what you need, not more. And now if we click on these vertices, we can adjust this up. Let's do it over here too, to have it exist where I want it to on this more organic line that's not straight. So that looks pretty good. Even this line looks pretty dang good. Let's maybe extend this out, have it match like that. 
This looks good. Let's bring him down a little. Move that. Maybe move this down. Click here. Wham, bam. And you will just have to fit this to whatever sort of line that you have, that you're working with. Let's bring this down. Here we go. And let's do this. Something like that. Look at that. Easy peasy. And so now we have it right along this edge, maybe even a bit low. Can I just move this whole thing up? Yeah, I can. Yeah, just like that. Easy peasy to have it shaped to whatever surface that you need. That is it for this tutorial. I'm not going to do any more because you guys have all the knowledge now to do whatever you need. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe. And I hope you have a great day and stay safe out there.